today I am announcing my candidacy for the 2024 Republican nomination to represent Colorado's fourth congressional district in the United States House of Representatives. It's the right move for me personally, and it's the right decision for those who support our conservative movement. Since the first day I ran for public office, I promised I would do whatever it takes to stop the socialists and communists from taking over our country. Don't be fooled by the heavily pixelated video featuring Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert. That video was not filmed in 2008. It was actually filmed recently. And she was noting that she will be running in a different district in the state of Colorado with the hopes of easy re-election. Now re-election is a weird way of putting it since she's running in a different district for the first time. But it was a strategic decision that she made considering that she nearly lost her re-election last time around to a Democrat. And things aren't looking so great for her today considering the fact that she had some scandals in recent months that will not bode well for her. And she has chosen to run in a more conservative leaning district in order to make her election easier. So why is this important for Republicans? Well, Adam Frisch, who is the Democrat who nearly beat Boebert, um, he lost by just 546 votes in 2022. He's raised over three times as much as the GOP incumbent in his new nomination bid. And so he's raised more money than Lauren Boebert, nearly beat Lauren Boebert in 2022. And Lauren Boebert has engaged in all these scandals uh, since that election that might actually really hurt her in getting reelected in Colorado's um, you know, fourth, uh, third district, which is where uh, she had previously run. Now the decision gives Republicans a stronger chance at holding on to Colorado's third district as they fight to keep their house majority next year. Boebert's departure from the third district uh, eases the path for a more moderate Republican, Grand Junction Colorado attorney Jeff Hurd, whom the Colorado Springs Gazette endorsed over Boebert this month. But Boebert is also trying to spin her decision saying, quote, uh, well, Boebert concluded that while she did not arrive at this decision easily, a lot of prayer, a lot of tough conversations and a lot of perspective have convinced me that this is the best way I can contribute to fight for Colorado, for the conservative movement and for my children's future and for the future of our great country. Um, now, the scandals that I'm referring to really have to do with the fact that she was disrupting a, a musical of Beetlejuice in Denver. Uh, she was caught on tape groping her date. Uh, she's also gone through a divorce, which I don't think really matters to anyone. I don't think that that should uh, work against a political candidate at all. But uh, that's one of the other things that's been cited. And the closure of her restaurant, her gun themed restaurant Shooters um, has been cited as a, a possible factor in hurting her in her reelection bid. Yeah, so uh, this one's a tiny bit complicated. First, uh, there's logic in what she's doing. Uh, she might lose in the third district, but the fourth district has 20 point advantage for Republicans. And Ken Buck is leaving, so he's the incumbent Republican. So it's a, all she has to do is win the primary. The general election is guaranteed. And same thing with Marjorie Taylor Greene, she's in a super red state. So all she has to do is win the primary and then the general is guaranteed. There isn't anything that, they, that Marjorie Taylor Greene could say to lose her election in that safe a seat. The fourth district of Colorado is the same. That's why Boebert wants to switch over to it. Now let's talk about GOP hypocrisy a little bit. This is a tiny one because no one remembers and it's such a small issue. But but I, I when I ran for Congress in 2020, I was about 20 minutes outside the district, right outside the district. But yes, you can run if you're outside the district. And the Republicans were beside themselves. You're a carpet bagger. A carpet bagger. I can't believe he's outside the district. How terrible. Uh, she, Lauren Boebert lives hundreds of miles yeah. from the fourth district, like from the boundary of the fourth district. It's not even close, not within literally hundreds of miles of close. So this is just like, I mean, in the more tightly packed East Coast, <laughs> it could be like this completely different state, right? So, so it's pretty chaos. But the then the one other part is her explanation. Stuff like that drives me crazy from politicians. This is the one advantage that Trump has. He says a lot of crazy stuff, but he says it in a way that gives you a sense that it's authentic. Maybe not honest, but authentic. As in, that's the real Donald Trump, mm -hmm. right? Lauren Boyd. So she does the two things that all politicians do. 
Well, Republicans, I should say. I've put a lot of prayer into this. <coughs> so that's, oh, it's, it's okay. So look, I put a lot of prayer into murdering you, and then I decided to do it. So it's okay, it's okay, I put a lot of thought into it and a lot of prayer. Does anyone okay. really believe that Lauren Boebert has even once like knelt beside her bed and prayed to Jesus? I do, I do. You do, I, really? Yeah, and okay. I'll tell you why. Because for a lot of you know, Christians, fake Christians, whatever you want to call them, right? To be fair to like to the, to the fake Christians, a lot of religious people are this way. And I know like when I was religious, like I wished for a lot of things. And so when you wish for something, what do you do? You pray, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, please God, you know, let me lose 20 pounds and eat bacon at the same time. For a Muslim, that would have been an ironic prayer. <laughs> but uh, okay, but so has she prayed for things for herself? My guess is yes. Okay, that's right. fair. You're probably right about and that. And religious yeah. people, and I love you, but you know, when you pray, you're not actually talking to God. You're gonna hear back what you want to hear back. Like it reminds me of Michelle Bachman. I'm mainly talking about fundamentalist religious folks, right? She said that God wanted her to be an accountant. Then God changed her uh, his mind and wanted her to be a politician. Like everything she did, she said, "Well, no, God wanted me to eat that last piece of pie." Sorry, but I had a lot of prayers though before I ate the pie. And, and then the second thing that Bobert mentioned is the children, always the children. She had to switch districts for her children. Why were your kids like, mommy, I really want you to run in a district hundreds of miles away. Come on. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the statement she made about her children, I mean, obviously it's not really about doing anything for her children, but it's a way of connecting with voters and, you know, Appearing as though he's just, she's just like them, and she's got kids too, and she has the same concerns and worries about children as they do. Like I get why she does that. The the, the whole thing about like oh I, I prayed on it, it just it seems a little antiquated at this point. That's the reason why I asked you the question. Like I don't know if that even really appeals to voters anymore, the same way that it did, let's say, back in the early aughts. No, because you're in a different bubble for a lot of conservative she's voters. She's in Colorado. In the fourth district, where it's a 20 point advantage for Republicans, I bet, ton, and Colorado has, Colorado Springs has a lot of really conservative parts. Okay. Although right. it's a blue state overall these days. And so, in, and the fourth district is super conservative. And so she knows that's like easy way to hook religious voters that are on the Republican side. I know, but you just say you prayed on, they're like, oh, I relate to that. I prayed for a, you know, a, a, a brand new car the other day. I just don't think. Religious and conservative voters are are dumb. Like I don't think they're dumb. I mean, she got caught just a few months ago, like grabbing a dude's crotch at a musical of Beetlejuice and mm -hmm. vaping indoors and being super obnoxious and disruptive to the entire audience. Like to be fair, she wanted that juice. You want that juice? Go do it in the comfort of your own home. Don't be doing it out in public while people are trying to enjoy ju Beetlejuice. You but get the what flip I'm side but is my, my point is like. Talking about how you're preying on things, I don't think is going to persuade religious conservative voters to forget about the fact that you got caught in those scandals. I don't know. I don't know if they, so. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll see. Because with Trump, I mean, Trump did everything imaginable. Grab him by the crotch, he said, and they'll let you get away with it because you're a celebrity. Trump's also a man. Yeah, and he was on the cover of Playboy and, you know, and, he, we, and the mistresses and the porn stars, etc. And all those religious folks who said family values were like, had a boy, way to go. You got him by the crotch. <laughs> right? So, like, am I, is Bobert totally mistaken in thinking if she just says, oh, I prayed on it, that they'll be like, oh, Okay, as long as you're on our side, as I, long as you're on our side. I know, but you're also forgetting the fact that there is a double standard when it comes to that type of stuff, yeah, depending fair. on your sex, right? And so there's always been much stricter standards for women in conservative circles, in religious groups as compared to men, so. I mean, look, yeah. there's also the Republican Democratic double standard. If name any, I hate to do this, but I'm gonna, it's just so you can trigger in your mind what would actually happen. Name any Democratic woman, if they had done that at Beetlejuice play, right? If Elizabeth Warren had grabbed the crotch. Oh my crotch, God, please don't, okay, I don't no, want to imagine that. No, but like you, but the reason I mentioned a name, I one, be because a, you know Elizabeth Warren has a 0% chance of doing that. It would be so shocking that I would almost be impressed. Right, okay. but what would the Republicans do? 
for the rest of her career. Totally. That is the only thing they would ever mention. She once said, based on something she heard on her family, that she was 116th Native American. No, that was bad, Jane. Okay, bad. okay, whatever, whatever. Yeah. They found that tiny little needle in her haystack and they're like, and they won't let it go. If she grabbed her crotch like Lauren Boebert did, okay, on tape. They, they would never, ever stop talking about it. Not only in her context, but in the context of all Democratic women. A Republican woman does it, bygones be bygones. They don't care. I don't think they care at all. We'll see, we'll see. I mean, look, she wasn't popular to begin with, which is why she nearly lost her reelection bid. Let's see how it works out for her in this new district. I would venture to say that. The voters in that district will not take kindly to the fact that she lives literally hundreds of miles away. I, I hear you on what you're saying about the, you know, political jabs meant to destroy someone's candidacy, and it's inauthentic when it comes from other politicians and other political groups. But I do think that the constituents in that district are gonna want representation from someone who actually lives in that district and understands what they experience on a day-to-day -day basis and what their needs are. So we'll yeah. see, we'll see. Maybe I'm, I'm being too hopeful. I just think that someone like Lauren Boebert has not really Proven that she's well suited to be a sitting member of Congress, and, and she's I don't not think the that only one. At all for <laughs> she's Republican not the only one. No, I think. Look, I don't think that matters for Republican voters at all. At all. Marjorie Taylor Greene's worse. Agreed. And Republican voters love her, right? So, but there is something about Lauren Boebert where it's not exactly the same. And I could see Republicans in a primary going, well, let's just go with another conservative, right? Because I think that the fact that, and I think you, it's partly what you said, Anna. Different standard for women and men. If Donald Trump had done the same exact thing, they'd definitely say attaboy. In fact, we know that they did. It's mm -hmm. literal, right? And and in her case, they might think like, eh, I don't know, as a woman, that's unbecoming, right? And she's yep. insubstantial, etc. Even though a lot of clown ass Republican men say similar things as her, right? I mean, Republican Congressman Dijarlay. Had an affair and had his mistress have multiple abortions. No, to be fair, the mistress only had one abortion oh, that he paid for. Sorry, just one he abortion. He had his wife, he paid for and had his wife do two abortions. And he got reelected. Three abortions <laughs> total. He got reelected. Easily, <laughs> easily. Republicans don't care about anything that they say they care about. All they care about is owning the libs. So if they think that Bobert owns the libs well enough, then they'll put her back in. Well, and that's how it goes. And she'll own that crotch. If you enjoy this video, that's because of our members. They make us independent, they make us strong, and they make us honest. Become a member today by hitting the join button below.